So here's a situation that happens perhaps more often than you'd think. Either online or in person, an artist creates something, something with a degree of originality, an original character, a new creation or idea, and in response to this, someone says these infamous words, this reminds me of blank, or so it's basically this combined with this, or any variation of incredibly clever and original jokes like, oh, can I copy your homework? Sure, just make sure it looks, you know what I'm talking about. Now, you're either one of the artists that this has happened to, or maybe someone's shared this with you in an attempt to help you understand where they're coming from. Maybe you've even said this before and don't understand what the big deal is. My attempt with this video after obsessing a bit over the years over this frustrating occurrence is to bridge your minds, to build understanding in the disparate gap between these two groups of people with heavy bias toward the artists, let's be honest. First of all, consider the standpoint of the artist. The work that they've made comes from a personal place in some capacity. Maybe it's simply a custom character that they can make a sort of mark with. Maybe it's a piece of or representative of a much larger world, story, or idea that they're developing. Coming from the perspective of a character designer myself, I can't be the only one who, through the work of developing ideas, iterating, spending hours illustrating and refining those ideas, has the goal of, and takes pride in, the originality, the novelty. Now sure, there's no such thing as something being wholly original, most things are remixes in some capacity, but the desire is to make something new, to problem solve and to carve new trails. After all, a client wouldn't come to me and say, make Spongebob or Batman. Those characters already exist. The thrill of the chase comes from making the next Spongebob or the next Batman, and that takes a lot of work. Especially too, for a new generation of independent artists, the big franchises are out there, they're well established. The hope and dream is to maybe build something of their own in a similar vein one day. That's why when someone says, this reminds me of Stitch, this looks like Stitch, so it's basically Stitch, hey Disney, can I copy your homework? Not only is there an air of judgment and superiority that can come with that, it's very easy for the work to feel like a failure, at least in the eyes of this person. It feels like a rejection on their part. They will not allow your idea to germinate in their minds because they've measured it against an existing thing and found it wanting. You didn't make something new, it was too derivative. Now, as you're starting out and developing as an artist, there's a good chance that your work really is going to look derivative. But for some reason, years down the line, people don't stop saying things like this. So I've made it a matter of thought, and instead of getting frustrated with what feels like a careless, heartless put down, to maybe get the benefit of the doubt from the other side. This feels like a lifelong thing for me. The things that I make take a lot of thought, and people do things without thought, and then I pour tons of energy into trying to understand them. I'm, I'm talking outside of art, this, this is just a general life thing. So consider the standpoint of the observer. Perhaps this person is not so artistically inclined. They don't really understand at all the amount of thought and work that went into this. They perhaps aren't able to connect to the struggle of the creator or the relationship between creation and the entertainment that they enjoy. And maybe, just maybe, although I doubt it, someone who says something like we're talking about had a good motivation. Again, it's it's a possibility. Possibility one, this looks like Spider-Man, and it's meant like I know of an official, societally accepted character by the name of Spider-Man, and through your artistic wizardry that I don't really understand, have created something very close to that. As a measuring bar of doing a good job, you got very close to Spider-Man, as though emulation had been your goal. Good try. And what they don't understand is that you weren't trying to make Spider-Man. But whatever. Possibility number two. This reminds me of Darth Vader. And what they leave off the end is that Darth Vader is one of their favorite characters, and they really appreciate the vibes your work is giving them. See, the thing that we tend to lose, either online or in person, is that element of connection and understanding that's happening. As much as you may have, in some subconscious way, been hoping to be understood through this work that you've made, they may be seeking, in a similar sense, a point of connection or identity and understanding that they've now expressed through their reply. They understand what's going on to an extent, they're hip to it, and they appreciate it. Sub-possibility to this one, I've come to learn that almost the majority of people are very poor communicators. They never quite graduate past the point of the letters that they type into a field being legible or the words they say being understandable, let alone reading it back and thinking, how does this come off and have I communicated effectively? See, creating art is mostly about expression, but creating design is about communicating, and communication requires effort. And I think that the disparity that's happening at the core here is one of communication of a communicator falling on deaf ears, or at the feet of one that communicates poorly, or simply differently, which is enough to cause agitation sometimes. Possibility three, this reminds me of Mario. And through making this observation, I now have power over your work. I now don't have to respect it. 
And yeah, I know this one is kind of awful, but either through insecurity, through stress, or through the inhuman qualities that lead to bullying, some people are just out to prove that they are smarter or better than you for what you've done, despite maybe something deep down that actually threatens them and may make them feel like they couldn't make this or are bitter that they didn't pursue the same kind of work or a fear that resists them at any point. There is nothing easier in the world than sitting back and putting others down. It's really the coward's way out. Now, unfortunately, you'll see it a thousand times a day, either online, on YouTube, everywhere. It's kind of like the sad entropy that strains the threads of society. And sometimes it feels like the triumph of understanding, communicating, and wielding compassion can't win out. But that's what the entropy wants you to think. So for as many people as there are who will only ever hate you and your work, there will always be those who appreciate it as well, and those are the folks who your energy should go towards. If someone has indeed decided to put you down through what they think, it's vital that you understand that another person's opinion only holds as much weight as your own. To respect yourself is to understand that how you feel is both valid and just as valid as how they feel. This may be tough for some of us to realize, but someone putting down your art is not a reason to stop making it. Their opinion, while you may respect that they are able to have one, does not hold more weight than yours. And to understand that human beings are equal may sometimes mean elevating yourself after putting yourself down for so long. Possibility four. This reminds me of Buzz Lightyear, which is a thing that they came up with because they do like what you've made and they respect the effort. They just have no frame of reference for what it takes or what it took to make. They wanted to say something nice to you, but this is all that came out. Or nice colors how, how did you how did you do the colors how, how do you do that how do colors work they don't know they're just your aunt karen who feels alienated from your dad and hopes this brief window she has with her niece gives her a chance to reconnect with her after so long if you're a karen and you're having trouble expressing a specific thing about this buzz aligned work it it's okay we understand your pain the words don't have to be perfect to show you care Possibility five, this reminds me of Simba, because guess what? The artist who made it grew up with the Lion King. It inspired them to be who they are today and to make that kind of work. And nothing is truly original, but the sooner we are at peace with what came before us, the more equipped we are to make the next generation of work. Maybe there's still a little Simba derivative now, but that doesn't mean what comes next won't be as original as they come. Possibility six, this reminds me of an inside joke from an anime series whose fans incessantly and militantly recommend and reference it, am I right? Possibility seven, they were trying to make a joke and it just wasn't funny or it was overly familiar. But attempted humor is at its core a point of human connection and understanding like we've been talking about. So does any of that help at all? I hope it does, other than the fundamental disparity between thinking and communicating and those who don't. I don't think I'll ever truly make peace with that one. I think that artists especially are often those who haven't felt like they fit in in life, uh, who feel misunderstood, and sometimes at this point where your work is kind of unofficially submitted for approval, it can dredge up a lot of those same feelings of rejection, and especially too, a lot of the work of an artist is to try to create something meaningful and enjoyable. So when the reaction is like the opposite of that, or you're maybe not going through the best of times, but are still trying to make other people's lives better microscopically, it can be really frustrating, like you're just screaming from a void of isolation. But two, going back to valuing your own opinion, take pride in your accomplishment here. Other people's praise or kudos won't ever matter if you didn't make it because you wanted to and enjoyed it in the first place. So speaking of artists just trying to make stuff, that's me. And after a lot of thinking on the idea of sort of the purest form of an artist making things for an audience who then supports them in return without companies in the middle, without these third party outlets or projects, I've made something called Biko's Backpack, which is new original art created each month specifically for Biko's Backpack that shows up in your mailbox in the form of pins, trading cards, mini prints, and stickers, and that just enables me to more directly work on independent and original stories while you still get something in return. So Tay has been helping with these. We started shipping them out last week. There's still time to get in on January's. Head over to patreon.com slash bageldenizen and choose the Biko's Backpack tier. Also, we're running a sale right now on these Animal Crossing prints over at brooksegleston.com shop. $10 for 20 of them and free shipping for patrons. I'm making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge, and you can keep up with me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating. I almost guarantee you there's going to be people commenting under this video that they don't have a problem with this, which that's great. I'm really happy for you. But that's like going to a video on how to draw arms and saying, I already know how to draw arms.